part of it is that I'm a little, because I have such a low opinion of the commentariat in the United States and the and the news organizations, which really do just work for the US government. I mean, I really see them as I did Izvestia and Pravda in the 80s. Like they're just organs of the government and I think they're contemptible. And I think the people who work there are contemptible. And I say that as someone who knows them really well personally. I think they're disgusting. Um, that I, I'm a little bit cut off kind of from what people are saying about me because I'm not interested. But um, so I try not to be defensive. Like, see, I'm not a tool of Putin. But the idea that I'd be flacking for Putin when, you know, my relatives fought in the Revolutionary War, like I'm as American as you could be, um, it's like crazy to me. Ann Applebaum calls me a traitor to my, okay, right. It's just like so dumb. I, but no, of course they don't have, free, no country has freedom of speech other than us. Canada doesn't have it. Great Britain definitely doesn't have it. France, Netherlands, these are countries I spent a lot of time in. And Russia certainly doesn't have it. So that's why I don't live there. I'm just saying our sanctions don't work. That's all I was saying. And we don't have to live like animals. We can live with dignity. Even the Russians can do it. That's kind of what I was saying. Even the Russians under Vladimir freaking Putin can live like this. And no, it's not a feature of dictatorship. That's the most, I think, discouraging and most dishonest line by people like Jon Stewart who really are trying to prepare the population for accepting a lot less. He is really a tool of the regime in a sinister way, always has been. Um, like, how dare you expect that? What are you, a Stalinist? It's like, no, I'm an American. I'm like a decent person. I just want to be able to walk to the grocery store without being murdered. Is that too much? To ask? Shut up, then you don't believe in freedom. It's really dark if you think about it, you know? So there is a fundamental way which you wanted Americans to expect more. You don't have to live like this. We don't have to live like this. You don't have to accept it. You don't. And everyone's afraid in this country they're going to be shut down by the tech oligarchs or have the FBI show up at their houses or go to jail. And people are legit afraid of that in the United States. And my feeling is, so? Like, show a little courage. Like, what is it worth to you for your grandchildren to live in a free, prosperous country? It should be worth more than your comfort. That's how I feel. We should make clear that, you know, by many measures, you look at the World Press Freedom Index, you're right, US is not at the top, Nor Norway is. US is, scores 71, Norway same as is. Gambia <laughs> really? in West Africa. So let me just ask. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. <laughs> now you're making me laugh. Ukraine is 61 and Russia is 35. The lower it is, the worse close to China at 23 and North Korea I, I at the very bottom 22. Didn't Ukraine put Gonzalo Lira in jail till he died for criticizing the government? How I, can they have a high press? Yes, that's why there are 61 But I'm saying, out of look, I, I don't know what the criteria are they're using to arrive at that, uh, but I know press freedom when I see it, I try to practice it, which is saying what you think is true, correcting yourself when you've been shown to be wrong, as I have many times, um, being as honest as you can be all the time and not being afraid. And those are wholly absent in my country, wholly absent. People are afraid in the news business. I would know since I spent my life working there and they're afraid to tell the truth. They're under an enormous amount of pressure and a lot of them have little kids and mortgages. I've been there. So I have sympathy, but they go along with things. Like you would, you are not allowed. If you stand up at any cable channel, any cable channel in the United States and say, wait a second, how did the Ukrainian government throw a US citizen into prison until he died? for criticizing the Ukrainian government, and we're paying for that. That's what's that's why it's offensive to me, we're paying for it. And that happens all the time around the world, of course. But this is a US citizen, and we're paying the pensions of Ukrainian bureaucrats. Like, we, we are the Ukrainian government at this point. And like, if you said that on TV, on any channel, well, you, you know, you'd lose your job for that. So yeah. like, that's not, I don't care, or Norway is at the top, really, Norway. If I went on Nor Norwegian television and said NATO blew up Nord Stream, which it did, NATO blew up Nord Stream. The United States government, with uh, the help of other governments, blew up, committed the largest act of industrial terrorism in history. And by the way, the largest environmental crime, the largest emission of CO2, methane. Could I keep my job now? So how is that a free Well, we price? don't know that. I mean, the whole point of- In Norway? Difference. Yes. Well, as a Scandinavian, I can tell you, they would not put up with that in Norway for a second. Oh, it's Were been a while. TV eating for the majority? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, but in, it's a, deviating maybe is uh, frowned upon, but- Frowned upon, yeah. Uh, but do you have the freedom to say it if you do deviate? That's the question. Can you keep your job? That's you one measurement job, of it. Yeah. yeah, it's not the only measurement. Obviously being thrown into prison is much worse than losing your job. I've been fired a number of times for saying what I think, by the way. Um, and it's fine. I've enjoyed it. I don't mind being fired. It's I've always become a better person after it happened. But it is one measurement of freedom. If you know, if you have the theoretical right to do something, but no practical ability to do it, do you have the right to do it? And the answer is not really, actually. 